to learn in calculus is limit. Now, by definition, if a function becomes arbitrarily close to a unique number l as x approaches c from either side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. Now, the first thing that we need to understand about limit is how to read this complicated notation. Now, if whenever you see this particular notation in calculus, you read this as the limit of f of x as x approaches a certain number c, which is equal to L. Now, this may seem a little bit complex, but once you are exposed with a lot of limit notations and limit functions, it will be a little um, easier to understand how you evaluate and interpret limits. So we have here some examples of limit notation. So we have limit of 3x squared as x approaches 4. We also have limit of 2x all over x squared plus 1 as x approaches 0 from the right. And we also have limit of 3 all over x as x approaches positive infinity. So this is some limit notation that you might encounter in today's lesson. So our first task is to understand limit and how to evaluate limit. Now for this example, we're going to estimate the limit of 3x minus 2 as x approaches 2 numerically. Now by definition, or from the definition, it says or it mentions there that we need to find a certain number c that is equal or getting closer and closer to f of x from either side of your number line. So if you're going to inspect, if we're going to evaluate 3x minus 2, which is our function, and we know very well that 3x minus 2 is just a linear function, that's why we have a line in our graph, as x approaches 2, and this is x is equal to 2, from either side, which means from the right side and from the left side, we need to figure out a way on how to find that particular value in our function, or in this case, in our graph, where f of x is getting closer and closer to. Now, to see that particular point using our approximation method, I am showing you the values of x that is getting closer and closer to 2 from the left, and the value of x that is getting, get, um, getting closer and closer to 2 from the right. So we are going to inspect and see what particular value of f of x it's approaching to. So if we start from the very left, I started with 1.9, which is a number closer to 2, but not exactly 2. I have 3.7 as my f of x. So if I substitute 1.9 to my function 3x minus 2, so 3 times 1.9 minus 2, it will give me 3.7. Now if I choose another number, since I'm working with limits and not just an exact number, I'll use 1.99, which is not exactly 2, but closer to 2, and it will give me an f of x of 3.970. And if we choose another number that is closer to 2 but not equal to 2, let's say 1.999, our f of x is now 3.997. Now by inspection, we know that f of x is getting closer and close to, closer to a certain number as x is approaching 2 from the left. And it's basically approximated with a value of 4 because we have 3.997 here. Now we need to inspect that it's also similar, it has the same result if we use a certain number of x that is coming from the right which is getting closer and closer to positive 2. So the first number that I chose is 2.01 which is closer to 2 from the right but not exactly so if I substitute 2.01 to my function 3x minus 2, I'll have 4.030. And if I choose another number that is closer to 2, which is 2.001, I have a number which is 4.003, which is closer to 4 from the right. So if you'll notice, by this particular method, we know that as x approaching a value that is getting closer and closer to 2, we have f of x which is equal to 4. So as x is approaching from the left and from the right, 
f of x is getting closer and closer to 4. Therefore, our limit exists. And that particular limit is equal to 4. So if we're going to evaluate limit of 2 all over 3 minus x as x approaches 3, we can use the substitution method. And by substitution method, we are simply plugging in the value of x, which is 3, to your function. And at x is equal to 3, if we substitute it to our rational function, we'll have 2 all over 3 minus 3, which is 2 all over 0. And we know in algebra that any number divided by 0 is undefined. Therefore, this particular limit does not exist using the substitution method. Now, if we're going to inspect this further and we graph our rational function 2 all over 3 minus x, this is our graph of our rational function 2 all over 3 minus x. And if you will notice, we have a vertical asymptote, which is basically a wall that the function will never cross. So this particular wall right here is the value of f of x as x approaches 3. Therefore, it does not exist because if you will notice, if we are going to look at our graph, coming from the right, the graph is getting closer and closer and closer to 3, but not exactly 3, and it's going down to the negative infinity. And from the right, I mean from the left, this is our asymptote, our graph that is getting closer and closer to positive 3 from the left is going up to the positive infinity, which is basically a different value from the left and from the right. So therefore, the limit does not exist using or visualizing it using a graph. So this is another method that we can use. We can use the substitution method to see or evaluate if a limit exists. And then we can also look at our graph to inspect if that particular limit is not existing using the substitution method. So in our example number three, we are going to evaluate the limit of x squared minus nine all over x minus three as x approaches three. Now in substitution method, if we replace our rational function by 3, we'll have x squared minus 9 all over x minus 3, which gives us 3 squared minus 9 all over 3 minus 3, for x is approaching 3. And by substitution method, we know that it will give us 0 all over 0. And 0 all over 0, since your denominator is 0, this particular rational function is undefined. So at x is equal to 3, we know that it's undefined or does not exist by substitution method. However, if we graph this rational function, this particular rational function will give, give us this particular graph. And you'll see that it's continuous and it doesn't have any asymptote, it doesn't have a hole, and it doesn't have a wall. So how can it be that this particular function by substitution method is giving us a limit that does not exist at x is approaching 3 when we can see very well that this is actually a continuous function. So by inspection, we are going to see or check what that particular number is that our f of x is approaching to as x is approaching from the left and from the right. So as x is getting closer and closer to 3 from the left, and as x is approaching closer and closer from the right, we are observing that our value is getting closer and closer to a certain number. And that particular number is equal to 6. So in this case, since we know from the graph that it doesn't have any breaks at all, but we know that it's still approaching a certain number, by approximation method and by graphing method, we know that it does exist and it's now, if you will see, this particular method is quite tedious. So it might take you a while to see or to check if every single rational function that is a limit does not exist by this particular method. So you will substitute 2.7 to our rational function and see if it will give you 5.7 and so on. So is there any other way on how we can evaluate limits without using this tedious process of approximating our value? And the answer is yes. And this is one technique that we can use in evaluating limits without actually approximating our value by substituting the value of 
x that is approaching that number. So in this example, we're using the same rational function, x squared minus 9 all over x minus 3, as the limit of x is approaching 3 from both directions. By this factoring technique, we know that x squared minus 9 can be factored out as x minus 3 times x plus 3. And by simplifying the rational function, we can get rid of x minus 3 and x minus 3, leaving us with limit of x plus 3 as x approaches 3. Now, since our function is now simplified, by substitution method, we can replace x by 3, and you will see that 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, which is a real number. Therefore, the limit of this particular function exists using our factoring technique. So it's the same answer as the previous example or previous process that we did. However, we don't need to use the approximation method to be able to evaluate our limit. So the key here is to uh, remember all your factoring technique to be able to use this strategy in finding or evaluating a limit.